Uh, good morning. This is a presentation by the title of Madison Conservation Corps Auditing the World One Home at a Time. And uh, we have Curtis on my left and Steve on my right. They'll be running through the pre presentation this morning, so hope you guys enjoy it. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Stephen Campbell, and I'm a senior ISAT major. I'm an IKM concentration. Hi, my name is Curtis Cox. I'm also an ISAT major, concentrating in IKM. And our advisor is Dr. Ben, the coding legend, the coding legend himself. All right. So as an overview of what we're going to talk about in our presentation today, we're going to be talking about the growing energy problem in the world, uh, our plans to mitigate this problem through the creation and growth of our organization, the Madison Conservation Corps, uh, and then our journey in the development of our application for easier home energy audits that our future students will be using to perform residential energy audits in Harrisonburg. So going into a little bit about the major problem our capstone tackles, uh, fossil fuels are a major part of our everyday lives in the form of the cars we drive, our heating and cooling systems, and they also are used by the big electricity generation companies as a big source of fuel for uh, the massive energy demand of the United States. So not only will these fossil fuels eventually run out, but they also uh, have a variety of harmful and negative effects to the environment. Uh, and then energy consumption is also a big problem and our goal is to uh, change people's collective behaviors about energy usage. So we got a nice graphic here sponsored by Deloitte. Uh, it's the average annual electricity and power consumption per capita in kilowatt hours. Uh, and as you can see, the US is the number one user. We're almost double the next leading person, uh, Europe, and then we're almost five times as much as China uses per person. So our main goal was to combat this energy usage consumption uh, and also another important fact is the U.S. only has four and a half percent of the entire population, but we use 20 percent of the total available energy. All right, so as Stephen just say, stated, the U.S. has an epidemic when it comes to using large amounts of energy. And this is a pretty big problem that needs to be addressed sooner rather than later. So how are we going to reduce the amount of energy the U.S. uses? Well, there's only two efficient ways to do that, and that's through the clean, uh, sustainable energy uh, two paths to clean sustainable energy. And the first one is the adoption of alternative energy, and that can be wind, solar, geothermal, and so on. And the other path is a conservation energy, where that is just reducing the amount of energy used. All right, as you can see here from the graph, um, the residential and commercial sectors take up about the whole energy consumption for the U.S. when it comes to um, buildings. Uh, this the factors, uh, they could be like lighting the, bus lighting the business and um, your appliances and heat and cooling your homes and so on. The equipment and technology for these have increased greatly, but there's still much we can do to, we can do to uh, reduce the amount of energy in U.S. buildings. Uh, this is where we um, got our inspiration for Madison Conservation Corps. Instead of uh, focusing on one building like other projects, we decided to look at the big picture. We wanted to give um, back to the city of Harrisonburg and help make it more environmentally friendly. So what exactly do we do? Um, we, plan to re um, we plan to reduce energy consumption in the nearby neighborhood neighborhoods here in Harrisonburg. Encourage the Harrisonburg, Harrisonburg residents to um, limit or reduce the amount of energy they use will um, help them financially and help make, um, help make the world a better place for future generations. Um, the first step in reducing energy consumption in the energy sector is through a home energy audit. And that is just going through and uh, checking the exterior and interior of a building, such so as your home or apartment. And then how much energy is consumed and roughly how much consumption can uh, be reduced through uh, behavior and structural changes. So who exactly are we? We are a student organization that will do free energy audits here in Harrisonburg. Um, the students who, um, the students will invest their time to make a difference. Uh, the students, for investing their time, they will gain experience in uh, energy conservation, was actually very important, was very important for engineering majors and ISAT majors, uh, concentrating in, in uh, environmental and energy. Um, and the homeowners are the individuals that will um, benefit most from this project because they have the potential to save money. And the, the homeowners that allow us to do the audits will um, 
with uh, Smither now as other homeowners, it will, this would be a good thing. So, what are the auditing teams? It will consist of two people, the lead auditor and the junior auditor. The lead auditor is going to typically be JMU's juniors and seniors, and they're going to have energy auditing experience, while the junior auditors are going to learn from the lead auditors. Um, this is particularly some, oh no. The me this method should allow um, the organizations to constantly recruit with, without training at the East graduation. All right, so we're the second iteration of this capstone team, and luckily last year they were able to get some data on Harrisonburg's residential energy usage. So here we have the average kilowatt hours per customer from August 2015 to July 2016. Uh, as you can see, there are uh, spikes in January of 2016 and July of 2016, and those are during the coldest winter months and the hottest summer months. So the main reason for these spikes in electricity usage is due to turning on your heating system or your cooling system. Um, and this was just important for us to find because as you can see, just turning on that cooling system for January compared to October of 2015, it almost doubles the amount of energy usage. And this just kind of shows the potential that we have uh, to really make a difference in these people's homes. So through the help of our advisor, Dr. Benton, we were able to come up with some numbers to get a better idea of what this uh, power consumption looks like. Uh, we came up with 22 million kilowatt hours per year as Harrisonburg's estimated residential power consumption. Uh, that equates to around $17 million worth of power. Um, and the electricity generation caused around 39 million pounds of estimated carbon dioxide emitted. So we're looking at a pretty big problem here. So Virginia currently has a plan to try and reduce uh, the residential sector energy consumption by 10%. And this just 10% reduction would equate to around $1.7 million. So as you can see, that's a big amount of money. And you're probably wondering why it's only 10%, like it's not that big of a deal. How has this not happened yet? But um, through our research, we found there were four major barriers to this. Uh, the first being consumer inertia attributed like time, costs, and just general hassles to gather the information correctly. Uh, the second being limited access to capital for financial improvements. We found that the standard professional audit costs around $300 to $500 and up. And then if you want to get a little more in-depth, uh, it's a little more expensive. Uh, and also, once you do that audit, you also have to pay for the upgrades to the home to get your home more efficient. Uh, the third being lack of public awareness. Um, we kind of want you to think of a home as you would your car, whereas the first thing you're thinking about in a car when you're on the market is the miles per gallon, the efficiency. Uh, no one really thinks about that when they're purchasing a home, but we kind of want to educate the public and make sure that they know that's something they should consider when they're purchasing property. Uh, the last being unavailability of home performance services. There's not that big of a market here for residential energy audits, and we think we can get into that. All right, so I'm gonna assume pretty much everyone in this room has gone to the store trying to buy a light bulb before. Um, you think it'd be pretty straightforward, right? But actually when you get to the aisle, it could be a little overwhelming. There's a lot of options, a lot of things to consider, like the bulb type, the wattage, and all. And if you're lucky, there might be a little chart for you, but it doesn't really say much. You're, you're probably just gonna end up buying like what you bought last time or the cheapest bulb itself. Um, but you actually take a few minutes to look around the aisle. You can save a couple dollars. This chart right, or table, I should say, actually gives a good illustration of that. You see the CFL <coughs> LED. Um, they might cost a little bit more to purchase, but in the long run, you're gonna save money. If they last longer and they're more energy efficient. Um, fun fact, if you replace 20 incandescent bulbs with LED, you can actually save $3,000 in a 23 year span. And that's about $130 annually. All right, so now we're going to have our advisor come up here and we're going to go through an energy audit demonstration. Uh, we got a script. I'll be performing the role of the lead auditor. I'll be the junior auditor, and we're not actors, so bear with us. All right, so we're going to be walking up to the house. Knock, knock, knock. Hello. Hi, how can I help you? Good morning. We're students here at JMU, and we're a part of Madison Conservation Corps. Madison Conservation Corps is an on-campus organization with students that we want to make a difference in the community. We're currently offering free home energy audits to the residents of Harrisonburg. Would you like to know more about this opportunity? Sounds interesting, but I don't know what a home energy audit is. A home energy audit is a review of the interior and exterior of a structure, such as your home. It determines how much energy is being consumed and roughly how much the consumption rate could be reduced. Um, 
Is it going to take a long time? Is it you know it's going to cost me a lot of money? So those are some really good questions. Uh, Madison Conservation Corps offers home end drives for free. Unlike other companies, they can charge you up to around five hundred dollars or more. And with the help of our application and equipment, it shouldn't take more than a few hours. Free? What's the catch? Nobody does anything for free. There's no catch. We just want to uh, better the city of Harrisonburg and make it more environmentally friendly. However, we do have some CFL light bulbs with us, and we can install them for you for a small price. We can explain this later in detail if you like. Okay, I think I just have a couple of more questions. Awesome, we encourage questions. So, um, how do I sign up for it? Uh, how long is it actually going to take? Uh, do I have to be home? Um, and could you do it right now? Yeah, so to sign up, all we need is your basic contact information and we'll sort in our secure database. Uh, the audit itself will take around two to three hours and we would like you to be home. And we also would love to start the energy audit today if you have time. Uh, but before we get started, we need to assess your attic, uh, heating and cooling system, the rooms you would like us to assess. And then in order to get the most accurate performance score, we recommend you assess every room. The audit will consist of two parts, a whole house part and room by room part. We would like to start off in a room or section that's easy to get to. Where would you recommend? And we also encourage you to ask as many questions as possible. Okay, why don't we start in my kid's room? Uh, he's at school right now, and so that would be easy for him to get to. All right, well, we'll get started with the lights in his room. Okay. Here All we right. Are. As we said before, we currently have CFL light bulbs with us. These, lights, uh, these light bulbs are a little more expensive, but they will save you energy and money in the long run. Uh, and they last longer, and they're more energy efficient. What's wrong with my current lights? I, you know, they seem to do the job just fine. Uh, well, the lights in the room are incandescent bulbs, and they might be great for lighting and also cheap, but they do use up a lot of energy and frequently need to be changed. I actually never knew that. Um, every time I go to buy light bulbs, I, you know, I just get overwhelmed by the like array of options in the place, and I just, you know, grab the one that I got last time. Yeah, no worries. This is actually something we come across pretty frequently. Uh, most people just spend a few minutes in the light bulb aisle and end up just picking the cheapest option. I know I've done that a couple times. Uh, would you like us to switch out the bulbs for a small fee? That sounds awesome. Let me go get my checkbook. No problem, this should only take a few minutes and then we can move on to the next room. All right, so next we need to check your appliances, but before that, um, I have to ask, do you keep any of them plugged in all day? Uh, actually, I keep them all plugged in all day, every day, is that bad? This is actually another issue we come across frequently. Homeowners are usually unaware that it is bad for appliances to be plugged in all day when they're not being used. It's technically called leaking electricity and even when your appliance is turned off, it's still consuming a small amount of energy. The average home in the U.S. spends nearly $40 every year on just leaking electricity. Seriously? That's crazy. Why would I want to spend $40 on something that's not being used? Exactly. That is why we encourage you to take a few extra seconds to unplug it when it's not being used. You will save money and energy. Man, I'm so happy you guys came. I wish I'd done this years ago. Hey, no problem. Thank Thanks, you. sir. And then we'll go through room by room, get all that data we need. Um, at the end, we'll get the results and rec make recommendations to improve his energy consumption. All right, so about three hours later, that's about how long it takes to perform an energy audit. So as you guys can see, uh, there's basically two parts to the whole process of the energy audit. Uh, we'll start out first with the whole house, which consists of checking the heating and cooling systems for energy usage, uh, any air leaks in the house with our blower door and thermal cameras, and then we also want to check the insulation of the house. Uh, the second part of the audit would be the room by room where we're going to each individual room and logging that in our application and then checking all the different appliances and electronics, their energy usages, uh, the type of lighting used in each room, and then also the uh, number of windows and their orientation. So luckily the U.S. Department of Energy has provided uh, this little checklist that they recently came out with and this is a general guide to what you should do when you're performing a home energy audit. Uh, and this kind of gave us our um, inspiration for how we should design our user interface pages and how to make it easier on the customer uh, when we can, so we can best efficiently um, like give them a household energy consumption calculation. So when our students are doing these audits, they're gonna be looking for labels like these. They're energy guide labels that are posted on most of your uh, refrigerators, washer and dryers, anything that uses electricity. 
uh, and they're going to be looking for the amount, the energy usage, uh, how much it costs, and these will be the inputs into our calculation for how much the house uses for energy. And then we also found that if one of the appliances you have doesn't have one of these labels, uh, there's a, a big uh, resource on the internet where you can type in the model and make in year, uh, and then you should be able to find the general energy usage for that. So to perform these, uh, these audits, our team is gonna need some equipment in the field. Uh, the first being that our technical equipment. Through the first Madison Conservation Corps project, uh, they were able to grant funding for an iPad Air 2, and then also a structure.io bundle, which is a thing that you plug into the iPad, and then you do a quick 360, and it will dimension the rooms, or dimension, get the dimensions of the room in a quick and easy way. It just makes it more fa a faster uh, process. And then the second group of equipment that our team will be using is the blower door, which is featured right there where you can check the leaks of the house, uh, a thermal camera, CFL and LED light bulbs, and then a multimeter. And these will all be provided through the ISAT department. All right. So before the software could be developed, we actually wanted to gain experience doing the audits. In order for us to do that, we actually had to do it manually. And um, after doing it, we found that it was pretty time consuming because we had to go room by room, and there's a lot of data to enter, as you can tell. Then afterwards, you just get a bunch of numbers, so you can't really interpret the results. You don't know your score, or you can change to save. You just get the numbers, and that's about it. So that's why our software is so important. We'll calculate the numbers and actually give you the results and where you can make changes. Uh, next is the stakeholders. Uh, for any project, you should consider the stakeholders, whether they're affected or not. Uh, these were the biggest six that we thought of. Uh, we had college students, they will be the ones performing the ex actually doing the NG audits. <coughs> then we had the residents, uh, they're allowing us to do the audits and they could potentially save money if they make the changes. Then we had companies that perform audits that sell energy and local contractors. They're affected because we could potentially take business away from them. Well, they can also be partners for us. Like say uh, we do an audit, we have recommendations to upgrade a window or insulation. We will um, recommend a local contractor so we can also produce business with the with uh, this project. Then we have the Harrisonburg Electric Commission and we're just reducing the electricity in Harrisonburg. So that's how they're affected. All right, so as I said before, we're the second iteration of this capstone project. Uh, the first team, we got their progress featured up here. Uh, they started out doing some background research, uh, collecting the Harrisonburg residential energy data for us to use, uh, researching energy audit procedures just to get a better idea of what they're going to be going into. Uh, they acquired the necessary equipment like the blower door, the iPad, and the structure sensor. Um, they conducted their at-home energy audit, and we were there while they were doing it just to get a better understanding of all the inputs that we would need. Uh, they started their de developing the application last year uh, using the Ionic framework. Um, and they got pretty far along in it, and they provided us the framework for our capstone team, and that was where our journey began. So we got our progress uh, featured up here, and obviously we started out in fall doing background research in 491. Uh, then we started working on updating the application. So this is where we experienced our first major roadblock. Um, our authentication client, Auth0, uh, had some major updates over the summer, and a big part of our first semester was just trying to deal with that and get it, our app functional and working again. But uh, once we were able to do that, uh, we got that all working and we integrated the previous team's framework into our application uh, and worked on user interface development. And then also throughout this process, we were researching energy audit software that was already out there. And luckily, Curtis found Building Sync, which uh, is a US Department of Energy um, common like scheme for energy audit data. And I'll be going to that next slide. So Building Sync was developed to address the lack of an industry standard for the collection format of energy audit data. And it kind of just allows um, energy audit data to be transferred across different softwares and databases to be uh, more efficiently used. Uh, and it's just you can compare houses more efficiently and based on the same calculation. So Building Sync was a great find, but um, they're focused on com uh, commercial buildings, whereas our project is focused on residential. So we will be filling that hole in the market. All right, so next we have the API. Anytime you send a message on your phone, check the weather, or anything like that, you're using an API. Um, unlike last year's team who built their API, we decided to go a different route after discovering the Energy Information, Administra Information Administration's API. Um, their API is free, and it's uh, available on files, by the um, big bulk files. And uh, these are some of the data sets that, actually, there was a lot more data sets, but 
it'll pretty much cover out the whole screen. So I just picked four that I thought was relevant. Uh, this API is going to work great. It has a lot more information and it's really going to help with our um, software. All right, next is um, the home energy saver. Um, this is our page. This is the home energy savers. Um, we didn't get around to making the results page because the API, you know, we're, we just got the confirmation key. And then um, next year, see if we can incorporate it. So this is ideally what our results page would look like. It's split up into four categories. You had heating, cooling, um, water heating, appliances, and lighting. And after you put in the data, it'll give you um, how much they spend yearly. Then with upgrades, how much they can save. Next, we want to incorporate a score. It's always good to know how much you save or how much you're spending, but it doesn't give you a score. So we want to incorporate a simple one through 10 score with one being the lowest, means your home is less energy efficient and needs improvement. And 10 being the highest means your home's more energy efficient. Um, this is great because anyone can really interpret one through 10 scale. And who knows, if you get eight, you can go around bragging to your neighbors how, home, uh, how efficient your home is. All right, so now we're gonna get a demonstration of our application. Uh, I'm gonna get out of this presentation. And we'll be pulling up an, emula an emulator, which is basically like a fake uh, tablet on my computer. Um, because we will be using an iPad to perform these actual energy audits, so we want to get a better feel of that. So uh, we have the login screen. This is our authentication where we use Auth0. So I'm just going to sign in with Google because I already made an account. But as you can see, you would put in your, um, your email and your password and log in, and it should create something for you. So we're going to log in, and then we got a nice picture of me because I'm one of the auditors. And then are you ready to save energy? So we got uh, start audit, previous audits, uh, access tools, and then also log out as our home screen. So we're going to go into start an audit. Um, and then as you saw before, we have uh, the full house or the room by room section and then also the results. Uh, and then those other three things, um, they're not functional now, but we figured we'd keep them there so the next team, if they want to implement something more, they always have the option to do that. Um, so we'll start with the full house. Uh, you can search another house or you can add a house. Uh, and then if you guys can see, it starts out first name, last name, email, phone number, street address, and then you can check if it's a permanent address or if you're just a renter, and then you can save that. And then once you do that, you add the house, then you'll go into the room by room section where you start off, add a room, and then that's split up into lights, appliances, and windows. Uh, once you go into that, you can go into lights, um, and it has a whole bunch of different inputs you can put in, like the usage, it, the energy usage, you can add or delete a light. Uh, and then we also have the appliances, um, and that's just another enter the energy usage and all that. And then we also have the windows where you're entering like orientation of the windows, quantity, and the dimensions of it. So then once you add in all that information, uh, you can hit done, and then obviously the results page wasn't completed yet because we're going to use the API in a different um, next year, so we have that much. And then once you're all done with the energy audit, you have the results page, and then you log out. So yeah, that was basically our application. We built it using the Ionic framework with a mixture of Auth0, which is our authentication client, uh, Cordova, and then uh, using the languages of like CSS, HTML, and TypeScript. So back to our presentation. All right, so we are fortunate enough to have a team take, um, take on this project next year. Uh, they will start off where we left off is that we'll be integrating the API. Like I said, we just got the API key, so we're gonna incorporate that into our software as soon as possible. Next, they're actually gonna build the student organization. Um, then after the um, software is actually developed, hopefully they'll get around to do an energy audit or two. All right, and lastly, we wanna give a huge thank you to our, our advisor, Morgan Ben. He taught us everything we know about software development and we wouldn't be here today without them. Then we'd like to thank Team One for uh, their contributions. Uh, even though we had to really scrap their app, we, they provided plenty of information for us and a lot of their stuff was incorporated into our app as well. Then lastly, we want to thank uh, JMU for sponsoring us, providing the equipment for us to do this. And thank you to everyone who supported us. We're forever grateful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, and now we'd like to open this uh, time for any questions anyone has. Don't be scared. Uh, is the Madison Corpse just 
teams that are doing projects or is it like an outside event right now is just teams um like me last year's team was isat this year's team's isat next year's team's isat but we want to build an organization like earth club and stuff like that pretty much anyone who's concentrating in energy consumption we're open to um, allow them to join us and perform the audits as well yeah but the goal is to make it like an on-campus organization and like anyone can join if they just want to yeah, it'd be a good experience. Mm -hmm. Good resume so, builder, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Anything else? Rich. Uh, is it kind of too early in the progress to maybe start reaching out to like, I know like you live in a rental property like Matchbox, um, to start reaching out to landlords and things like that because a lot of these places are like student houses, so they probably don't want to pay the company to change light bulbs. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we definitely, I think once we get all the API integrated, we definitely be able to be like, hey, here's our application, show it to them and be like, would you be interested in using this because you can uh, lower your home costs and then also just provide incentives for people to want to live where you are. But yeah, good question. Good answer. All right, well, that's it. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Uh, it was a great, great journey. <laughs>